A lot's changed since the last time we talked. It's with the Arizona Cardinals, especially. I think, interestingly enough, the way the 49ers season has gone, going into that Cardinals game and coming out of it, the 49ers were hot. Now, they did have that three game skid, but they're right back to where they were the last time we talked. I can't say the same about the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals had Dobbs starting at quarterback. They had a ton of injuries going into that game. And here they are starting to show that, hey, they can be competitive with some of these good teams in the NFL with Kyler Murray. And that maybe they're a little bit more talented than what people remember. So I think a lot's changed this time around. What do you think? Yeah, man, we finally got our franchise quarterback back. A lot of people have been writing off Kyler for the entire season, right? Coming off an ACL tear, doesn't know the direction of this team. The Cardinals don't have a lot of talent. Like genuinely, this team's not like insanely talented. You look at the roster, you get it out. And it's like, I don't even know half these people. Like a lot of people don't even know who we got on our team, right? Like you got the big names, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, familiar faces on defense. Outside of that, we don't got much. Kaiser White's out for the season. We don't got much. And then on offense, Oh, is Kaiser White out? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. That's a big Kaiser, loss. I believe he tore his bicep. And then mm. he played the rest of the game. Psycho, man. Psycho. Love Kaiser White. <laughs> Love him. But like Kyler Murray and James Conner, it's about it. Like that, that's all we got. So we finally got our franchise quarterback back. A lot has changed. Kyler Murray, in my opinion, at least, Cardinals fans are pretty divided too. I don't know how it stands like throughout the entire NFL or 49ers fans, how you guys feel about him. But man. I'm pumped to have him back. It just brings such a dynamic to this team. Like, it, it just seemed like a shift as soon as he came back in a bad season already. So, I love well, what Kyler's bringing. I'll say, I'll say this about Kyler. Nick Bosa talked today, and they they asked him about Kyler Murray. And Nick Bosa, as you know, famously told the front office of the Cardinals, "You're making a mistake if you take the quarterback. You should take me." But he really respects Kyler Murray. When he talked about Jalen Hurts a couple weeks ago, he said the trick to beating Jalen Hurts is to keep him in the pocket and make him play quarterback. That doesn't sound like a guy who has a lot of respect for Jalen Hurts. And then they went out and did exactly that, and it didn't go well for Jalen Hurts. However, he was asked a similar question about Kyler Murray today. And they said, hey, you know, is the game plan the same that you deployed against Hurts as far as keeping Kyler in the pocket? And he's like, yeah, I think as far as containing him, sure. But he can play quarterback at a high level. You know, he's a little bit smaller, and so sometimes the line can get in front of him. But if you're just asking him to play the quarterback position, he can do that. And he reiterated it multiple times throughout this interview. So I think, believe it or not, Nick Bosa has more respect for Kyler Murray than he does for Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts, you know, now it's it's easy to pile on Jalen, but we're just two weeks away from Jalen Hurts being an in the MVP conversation. And last year he was in the MVP conversation. So I think when Nick Bosa praising Kyler Murray, the way he did, I think that goes a long way. It says a lot about Kyler Murray. Yeah. And I mean, he's not wrong. Jalen hurts has not been a fantastic passer this season. I believe he has 10 interceptions on the season, like 19 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Like you keep him in the pocket and things are looking kind of ugly for him. Like, obviously if Jalen hurts can get on the ground and obviously big body, they want to be fourth and short, third and short. They want to be in short down situations all the time with Jalen Hurts. So if they're in those short down situations, Jalen Hurts will kill you. But you make him a passer and you get him in a deficit like San Fran had him. Ooh, there's not much for him. There, there's not much for him. Like Jalen Hurts can pass the ball. I'm not going to sit here and just discredit him, but like you would much prefer Jalen Hurts staying in the pocket. Kyler Murray's not like that. Like Kyler Murray can do both. His deep ball what, two years ago, was one of the best in the entire NFL. Last year, it took a massive decline. I won't sit here and act like that didn't happen. But, I mean, Kyler Murray's that guy. Like, even dating back to Oklahoma, Kyler Murray can kill in the pass game. And then the run game just makes it so much sweeter because he's out here running like a 4-3-something at 40, just blazing people, just making people look silly in open field. So it's tough, man. Like, if Kyler Murray can get back to that, things are scary. And you don't want Kyler Murray – in either situation. And I didn't even know Nick Bosa praised him like that. And obviously there's that one, two pick rivalry that they got going on telling Steve time. He's going to regret it. Like you said earlier, <laughs> I mean, that's always there too. So the fact he respects him and obviously that's clear respect. Cause he, he was not shy at all when it came to Jalen hurts. Yeah. I was like, damn, <laughs> like it's, <laughs> like it's like that. So, I mean, 
that that's dope to hear. So I mean, he, he's not going to come out here, and if Kyler Murray is horrible, he's not going to come here and say things like that. So I mean, it just speaks no in my eyes. No, definitely, you can tell when it's like kind of player talk or coach talk. He Nick, that's what I like about Nick is he's very sincere. He's very honest. I don't think he knows anything but to be that. So you're going to know exactly where he stands. But let's talk about Kyler Murray for a minute. Since he's been back, the Cardinals are two and two. They've been pretty much in, in all of those games for a, a, a big chunk of them. And Kyler Murray is leading the league since he's come back in turnover worthy play percentage in a good way, meaning he is putting the ball in harm's way the least amount of any quarterback in the NFL since he's returned. I think that's a, a new addition. He's taken to the West Coast offense pretty damn well. He's yeah. playing within that scheme and within that system. And you're starting to see the fruits of that. I know that you said that the fan base is split. I, you seem to be on the Kyler is our franchise quarterback. If you had to guess what percentage of the fan base says, hey, we should keep Kyler. And what percent is like, hey, we get, we should do everything we can to get to that number one pick and and get our true franchise quarterback. What are your, what are your thoughts there? This season has been crazy. Like, <laughs> I, like <laughs> I've been through the highs and lows, man. I said I wanted Josh Dobbs benched at one point. People are like, you're crazy because like I'm I'm known as like a Kyler guy in other yeah. aspects. Like I'm not going to shy away from that, right? Like I feel yeah. like Kyler's a guy. I'm going to stand on that. Yeah, people were telling me that Josh Dobbs is better than Kyler Murray and that we should ship Kyler out. Like after that little four game stretch, I was like, bro, I promise you, like Josh Dobbs ceiling was just backup quarterback. And we're kind of seeing that in Minnesota, too. Like he has that Lynn sanity run and then he plateaus out like he's like I hate the word game manager, but like he'll put you in positions to win games. He's not going to put you over the hump. So if it's a close game, you don't want Josh Dobbs coming down in the fourth quarter trying to lead a game winning drive. You want Josh Dobbs to be behind a defense who's going to carry, and then you might have a chance. Kyler Murray can elevate you. So uh, people got to realize that. And then, like, I want to Clayton tune our backup just to see what he has, right? You have a rookie quarterback on a rookie deal. You want him to play. Just see what you have. See if you have a competent backup long-term because he's on that rookie deal. And people were telling me Josh Dobbs is him. And I was like, no, no, no. And they're like, yeah, I want Caleb Williams too. Personally, I'm not sold on Caleb Williams like that. And I, I honestly don't know where he's going to land. I don't think it's going to be Chicago. So in the New England, I can't see it. I can't see Caleb Williams with the ego he has and like the persona, just like the aura around Caleb Williams as a person buying into Patriot culture like that. And I'm not sure Bill Belichick's going to be there next year, but it's hard. It's hard to imagine Bill Belichick working with Caleb Williams. Like <laughs> after working with Tom Brady, just Tom Brady, the guy taking pay cuts and all this, yeah, to like yeah. win championships, going into Caleb. I can't see it. So like, I don't know. Kyler Murray's been the guy for me regardless and i kind of just stand on that so well i I think the take sounds a lot better now and i've got to imagine that when dobbs was playing well that a lot of people were were asking for him to be the guy he's cheap he's young enough and i i understand it but he had what nine cracks at it or eight cracks at it and won one game and kyler comes in and they're two and two I, i think that it's pretty clear. And Dobbs was way outplaying the expectations. And, and I think a lot of people will take somebody outplaying their expectations to that magnitude and then confuse that with actually being a good quarterback. And those sometimes are two different things. <laughs> and and we're finding that out since he's gone to Minnesota. He immediately won the hearts of, of the Minnesota fans over in that first game. And then he's now benched for Nick Mullins, I believe. So that's that's where we are at. Marvin Harrison Jr. John brings up Marvin Harrison Jr. Is that who you would like to get? I'm preaching this so hard. Like <laughs> I, I'm dreading the scenario where the Patriots do trade up to one and then Chicago falls back to that two and just builds around Justin Fields and selects Marvin Harrison. Mm. I, I don't know if you agree with me, but I feel like Marvin Harrison's so generational. I feel like he's one of the best prospects we've seen in so many years, just in terms of receiver. Like obviously there's a lot of talent like in the past couple of years, you have Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, like there's a lot of guys, but Marvin Harrison, just six, three runs the way he does runs routes the way he does able to make contested catches like that. Obviously hall of fame father. So it's like, he's learned everything from somebody, right? <laughs> so I don't know. This kid just seems so generational. And then if you can slot him in at wide receiver one, which the Cardinals don't have in my eyes, Hollywood Brown's not that to me. 
Is he's a good wide one. receiver too. Hollywood oh, Brown's a good for wide receiver. Too. Sure. If yeah. you can have Hollywood as a wide receiver too, I'm banking on that all day. But as a wide receiver one, it's tough. You got a five eight wide receiver one who's I'm not saying one dimensional, but like the health concerns are there too. The durability is there. And if you can have him slide at wide receiver two and get those secondary corner looks, love it. So I feel like Marvin Harrison is that guy. And if the Cardinals can snag him somehow, I'm all for it. But to even have a chance, I think we got to lose out, which might happen, might not. 